Dear students, welcome to Target School Online Business Academy. In this YouTube lecture series, I'm starting from very basics and covering all the angles of financial accounting and management accounting. In the first presentation, we are going to look at the accounting equation and its related principles and theories. At the end of this presentation, you will gain the proper understanding of the five elements of the financial statements that are assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses. Then we are looking at accounting equation, how it has been constructed, understanding the relationship between these five elements in the accounting equation, then illustrates the differences between business transactions and non-business transactions such includes personal transactions and business events. Finally, the concept of duality on the accounting equation is discussed. Begins with the definitions. Conceptual framework for financial reporting identifies five elements. These five elements of financial statements. I will provide a separate video on financial statements, but giving a very brief idea you will see income statement and balance sheet in any business entity. In addition, you would see statement of cash flows, statement of changes in equities, if you browse through any annual report of a public company. In this slide, I'm going to explain the definitions that are taken from the conceptual framework, starting from assets. Pay your close attention to the definition. It is a present economic resource controlled by an entity as a result of past events. It is a right that has a potential to produce economic benefits that are expected to flow to the entity. Let me break down these bolded phrases with an example. An entity owns a machinery which is an economic resource owned by an entity that has purchased two years back. That means entity own it as a result of a past transaction. This machinery is used for the entity's production. Therefore, it is a right that has a potential to produce economic benefits to the entity. Giving some exa examples, you may note down property plant and equipment, cash, which is the most liquid asset, inventories, accounts receivables, goodwill, intangible assets, you may list out many assets as you want. Moving to liabilities, it is a present obligation to transfer an economic resource as a result of past event. Since it is obligation, the entity has no practical ability to avoid it. For an example, an entity obtained a loan last year amount to $100,000 at 4% fixed interest rate. So the event happened in the past. Now entity is having a present obligation to pay interest and principal repayment. So likewise, the examples of liabilities could be borrowings, short term or long term, tax payable, trade payables, where you purchase goods or services on credit, likewise you can list out liabilities. Before moving to the equity, let, let's see the differences between assets and liabilities, taking from these two definitions. Asset is a right. Liability is an obligation. Asset will flow future economic benefits to the entity, but liabilities will result in an outflow or transfer, on, transfer of economic resources to settle this obligation. Moving to equity, very easy. It is the residual interest in assets of the entity after deducting its liabilities. Putting them into an equation, so equity means equals to assets minus liabilities. Equity is our owner's capital. Equity is increased through owner's contribution to the entity and also if there is a profit made by the entity, 
you can see that an increase in equity. Profits are owners return on capital investments. You know how to calculate profit, that is the excess of income over its expenses. On the other hand, equity decreased through owners' withdrawals or distribution to owners by means of dividends. Or if the entity incurred a loss, that means if there is an excess of expenses over income, then it will result in decreasing the equity. I will discuss income and expenses in more detail in later slides where students struggle and often find hard to understand the definition. Let's first build up the accounting equation from our current understanding. Carrying forward the equation derived from the equity definition, which is equity equals to assets minus liabilities. The same equation can be rewrite as assets equals liabilities plus equity. I find this is more meaningful as assets can be financed externally or internally. Liabilities are the external claims on entities assets while equity is the internal claims. From the last slide, we learned that profit is added to the equity as it is the return on owner's capital investment. If it is a loss, that must be deducted from the equity. Expanding the profit, we can rewrite the extended equation as assets equals liabilities plus equity plus profit is expanded as income minus expenses. And doing a little switch, the equation can also be displayed as assets plus expenses equals to liabilities plus equity plus income. Having this equation in this format will help you to understand debit credit rule very easily. I will discuss this after completing our accounting equation module. Knowing this fundamental understanding, there is no need to buy hard this equation. However, everyone does. Okay, let's move to the income definition. I wanted to formulate the equation before, so it is very easy for you to understand this definition. Income means increases in assets or decreases in liabilities that result in increases in equity. Other than those are relating to contribution from equity holders. Income resulted in increase in equity that we learned in the previous slide. But you know, equity could be increased by owner's contributions. But that is not due to income. So the second half of this definition is well understood. Let's look at the first half. For that, I want to rewrite the equation as in here, taking income to your left hand side of the equation. Now focusing on assets and liabilities, applying simple, simple mathematics to understand our this definition. Left hand side income increases will reflect on either increases in assets <coughs> or decreases in liabilities. Further helping you out, there is a minus mark in front of liabilities. So decreasing liabilities anyway gives you another minus mark, minus sign to the equation. Therefore, minus into minus will give you a positive effect. On the right hand side, then that will balance this equation. I've got two examples here, cash sales of $1,000. $1,000 sales is an income. On the other side, cash sales increases cash assets. Say if this transaction is on credit, anyway, you have to recognize income. Instead of cash asset increases, then there you got increases in accounts receivables, which is also an asset. The next example is related to liabilities. How income 
could be resulted in decreases in liabilities. Say a customer has prepaid for a future order of goods. In accounting, we follow accrual accounting concept to record transactions. That means in accrual accounting, transactions are recorded in the period they occur rather than in the period the cash is received or paid. Since the entity has not yet paid the goods, provided the goods, we cannot recognize the customer's prepayments as an income. But customer's prepayments or paid in advance amount should be recognized as a liability by the time of prepayment receipt. Now in this second example, when the goods are dispatched, then only the entity can recognize that as an income, as recognize $1,000 increase in the income here. And the liability have to be reduced because now the entity do not have any obligation as the goods are already provided to the customers. Similarly, let's look at the definition of expenses. That means decreases in assets or increases in liabilities that result in decreases in uh, inequity other than those relating to distribution to equity holders. As explained for income, expenses will also have an impact on owner's equity. Expenses resulted in decreasing equity, but you know equity also decreased by owner's withdrawals or distributions, but this is not due to expenses. So the second half of the definition is well understood. And let's look at the first half of the definition. For that, again, we are writing the equation taking expenses to your left hand side of the equation. Now look at the liabilities and assets. Expenses increases will reflect on decreases in assets or increases in liabilities. Let's look at an example. Rent expense of $1,000. It increases expenses account, but on the other hand, cash asset decreases to pay for the rent expense. Since these two minus signs will give you positive 1000 figure on the right hand side of the equation, we'll end up balancing both sides of the equation. And the next example is rent payable for the period of period is amount to $1,000. As per the accrual accounting concept, we have to recognize expenses in the period they occur regardless whether cash is paid or not. So the expense is recognized and since it has to be paid, we need to recognize that as a liability, which is a present obligation to pay the rent. Hence, it increases liability. In my next presentation, I will work some common examples of recording business transactions in the accounting equation and followed by further advanced examples related to accrual accounting concepts. Those are the tricky ones. Let's move to business transactions and non-business transactions that are important when recording business transactions in accounting equation. Business transactions are occurrences that affect the assets, liabilities and equity items in an entity. A business transaction is recorded when it can be reliably measured in dollars and it occurs at arm's length. That means neither party can influence the transaction or control the transaction. Both parties are having equal, equal bargaining positions. So the transaction is treated with fairness, integrity and legality. In accounting, we only record business transactions. So far we discussed 
different types of business transactions such as cash sales, credit sales, cash purchases, credit purchases, rent expenses, capital contribution, withdrawals. Likewise, you can list out a lot. Let's look at the examples in my next presentation. But there are also personal transactions and business events that do not record in accounting. Personal transactions are transactions of the owners, partners or shareholders that are unrelated to the operation of business. Such as buying a computer for personal use by the owner, paying owner's home rent likewise. In accounting, we need to adhere to the entity concept that states an entity or a business and its owners are treated as two separately identifiable parties. Therefore, every entity, whether it's a sole trader, partnership or a company, must keep records of its business transactions separately from its personal transactions. Business events are occurrences that will probably have an effect the entity in some way in the future but are not recorded as business transaction until an exchange of goods occurs between the entity with an outside party. For, exa for an example, if an entity negotiates a bank loan to invest in a property, this will not be recorded as a loan or a liability until the loan is paid out to the entity. Giving another example, negotiating with a potential partner to join to the entity, signing a contract with a new employee. However, no transaction is recorded for wages if you have signed a contract with a new employee until the employee has completed the first week, fortnight or the month depending on the payment cycle of the entity. So, in a nutshell, we only record business transactions that affect the assets, liabilities and equity items in an entity, but we do not record personal transactions or business events. There is one more concept we need to understand before moving to the recording of transactions. That is duality concept. Every transaction has a dual effect on the accounting equation. By telling so, every transaction must be recorded at least in two accounts, two places in the accounting equation. However, there are possible scenarios where you will need to record in three places. We will get that when we are doing examples. This dual effect involves cash movement effect and the category of transaction effect. Every transaction has a cash effect, money paid or received, or money going to be paid or going to be received. Say in credit sales, my money going to be received that arise in accounts receivables. Say in cash sales, you receive money on the spot. The next effect is the category of transaction effect that means the nature of the transaction. It could be increasing or decreasing asset. For example, purchasing or selling of a non-current asset. Or it could be related to an income or expense. Or it could be related to increasing or decreasing equity. Or it could be related to increasing or decreasing liability, as in acquiring a loan or repaying a loan. Once recording both these effects, left hand side of the equation must be equal to the right hand side of the equation. The accounting equation must be kept in balance always. Done. We covered the fundamentals of accounting equation and we can start recording the business transactions. Please move to my next presentation. Thank you.